Good morning guys. Welcome to another video by Antique Serena. My name is Walter O'Neill and I got a real, real good video for you today. Uh, yesterday was an absolute crazy day. I don't know what the hell happened, but I had that much stock coming in. I ran out of money. I had to send out for more money. I could. I used my cash point allowance. I used my takings. I used all the money out the till. I used all the money out my pocket and I ordered more money in. Um, the job lot I'm going to show you now owes me £330. It's a lot of money. Um, but it comprises of quite a bit of gold, some silver, well only a little bit of silver, and some porcelains. So it's really, really going to be a good video today guys, a long video. Um, and I'm going to do my best. I'm really struggling with this new camera. The autofocus is absolutely shit. I bought a Lumix camera, the MZ50, and to be totally honest with you, I'm sorry I bought it. Um, I'm thinking I may have to buy another. I am sorry about the autofocus, guys. I'm struggling. I'm hoping at the moment it's just the settings i got to play with. So, yeah, I bought quite a lot of gold. Got some beautiful, beautiful rings. Um, the weight is there, so I don't even need to worry. But there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 pieces of gold. Two pieces of silver and some of the beautiful porcelain, oh god, including Clarice Cliff, Meissen, Hummel, Bezik. It's some really nice pieces, guys, so it's really, really getting for a treat on today's video. It's going to be a long one, but stick around. But I am going to start off with the cream of the crop. We're going to start off with the jewellery, as usual. <laughs> Hope you like the new haircut. And of course, I'm uh, growing a little bit of a stubbly beard back. I'm not going to grow a big one down here again, I'm just going to have a very short designer one for now. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So, I'm going to get to showing you the jewellery and as with the other films, I go into photograph it all and splice it at the end so you can actually get some really good look in, looks at the jewellery because I don't think the cameras focus entirely on the jewellery so you'll get to see it all properly at the end of the video. So, hope you enjoy guys. I know I did. Okay, so here we have the jewellery. I'm going to start off here with a nice little 9 karat gold rope chain. It is quite a nice little rope chain, in good condition. Um, it's shocking for people to bring me chains in good condition. They're normally always broke. Look at that though, guys. I'm hoping this autofocus kicks in. There are some beautiful, beautiful rings here. Mixture of carrots. And the stones are, well, spectacular. Really, really decorative rings, guys. Hang on, bear with me. It's not focusing in on the lighter colours there. Darker ones, no problem at all. This camera's a long way off the quality of my other one, guys. It really is. You can see some of these beautiful rings now as they come together. But I will, as I've said, include some photographs for you at the end of the um, video. There's no point in me researching rings. Uh, they are what they are. They're just gold. Some are diamonds, some are rubies, uh, some are CZs. It'll be what it is. But I'm telling you now, look at the thickness on that to that look at the thickness on the ring give you an idea this one ring weighs like three four rings worth some nice pieces in there really pleased with them and you will get to see the uh, stones and that really well at the end guys when it all focuses in moving on then we have a nine carat gold watch and it is a hallmark one on the side here there we go um, and we have a solid silver pocket watch these don't have a huge value about 20 30 pounds on these but uh, 
it is what it is. This, believe it or not, is worth more than the pocket watch. It is silver, silver brooch with enamel on the front. There you go. Hopefully you can see that now. Beautiful, beautiful gouache enamel. Really nice. So that brooch there, believe it or not, will probably pull £30, same as the watch. So that's the jewellery guys and obviously stay tuned, in fact I'm going to splice the photos of the jewellery in now at the end of the video before I do the porcelain so you can see the jewellery then you get to see the porcelain. So I'll, I'll add in the photographs at the end of this little section by you and then move on to the uh, porcelain but what do you think of that? You know, I'd have paid £330 just for this jewellery without the other pieces. Um, 320 sorry not 330 320 I paid um, so absolutely stunning some of these rings are going to go in the cabinet you know 70 80 pound each so yeah really pleased Okay, so now um, you've seen the jewellery, you've seen the photographs, you already know, wow, what a beautiful selection. And they're not finished. They turned around to me and said, this is just one little bit of the dress. Uh, they got an entire house to empty. So hopefully they'll be back. I'm going to start off with more Hummel. Now, I showed you the other day in a video i done the research for you. If it has the inner ring, raised ring, almost like a donut, that's the earlier edition and pulls more money. There's the hook, uh, the Gobel mark, and the MJ Hummel is impressed around there. Sometimes you see it impressed around the back. More often than not, these will have a label saying the um, the name. This one's lost his label. It, its remains are there, but you can't see the name of it. Um, but we'll. Uh, easily find that one it won't be a problem there's a little boy reading sheet music so there's our first little hummel here's our second which looks a little bit like a little dutch boy again the label's worn so i can't get the name which makes life easier when you've got the name and again got the uh later gobel mark but the only good thing I can do, I can try the impressed numbers. There's always an impressed number on the base. This one's 82-0. So, again, another nice, perfect Hummel piece. They had other Hummels, but they were all damaged, so I sent them away. So I said, give them a charity shop, do something, I'm only going to bin them. So, that's where we were at with that. I then had a Beswick, or Bezik Blue Tet. Nice little collectible bird. They don't pull fortunes. We'll have a look in a bit, see how much they pull. There's the uh, back stamp you're looking for. You're focusing in. Come on, be good. Camera is pissing me off. Excuse my language. We had a small little USSR, USSR, Russian bird. Uh, there's the uh, mark on the back there. Something I haven't had for a while, guys. Bit of Clarice Cliff. Harvest pattern. Newport pottery, Clarice Cliff. And it's quite a nice one. It's a preserved jar. It's not the bizarre range or anything, but um, 
I would think it's going to be 25 to 35 pounds for that preserved pot, but we'll have a little look and see from there. I've had a little pot, Port Marion. It would have had a wooden lid, but it's Port Marion Magic City. Uh, that's the pattern, anyways, Magic City. It says it quite simply on the base, anyway. This stuff used to pull really good money. I haven't had none for a while, so we'll see what it pulls. Be interested to find out about that one. Then we had, and as you can see, it's quite an extensive amount, a Royal Winton Luster Jug. And that's beautiful. It's hand painted and finished with the luster. It's Royal Winton Grimweeds, England. So probably 1930s through the 50s, somewhere over there. Lovely shape, lovely luster to it. That's a nice jug, guys. So happy with that. This was in there. I put it in, literally, I'll just put it on the boot sale. It's a bit of Silvac. Didn't see the point in leaving it there. Pattern number 684, Silvac, England. And that's like three quid on a boot sale, that is. Three, four quid. But I didn't see the point in not having it because the price was the same no matter what I took. As far as I was concerned, I'd given them the price. So I thought I'll take it all. If I get three quid back for that on a boot sale, it's three quid off my price. And we have a Whitcomb Fair Devon Dartmouth Jug. It's quite a nice uh, nice one. you got one, two, three, four, five men riding a horse or a donkey with one man holding the tail and a man leading them. So it's quite a comical uh, jug. On the reverse there we have a, well it looks a bit like a fence or a sty. And we have the mark on the base. Nice and simple. So what do you think of that little lot? And I know what you're thinking, where's the mycin? Now I wasn't 100%, I felt it was mycin when I had it. And I wanted to double check, because a lot of people do the cross sword mark in Germany, Dresden and Stitchendorf and a few others. There's loads of people copied it. There's even people who literally ripped off the mycin mark. Almost copied it identical. However, what we have here is a spectacular, very large bowl, beautifully hand painted, this molded basket, basket weave pattern around the sides. It's a hard paste porcelain, lovely ring to it, in good condition, no chips, no cracks. And there we have it, guys. The magical cross swords mark. Now this is quite a big, well I'm not a small man and as you can see it's not a million miles off my shoulder width. So you're talking is a wide bowl and I'll obviously I'll show you the research on this um, as well now. But um, star lot, without a shadow of a doubt this bit of porcelain is a beaut. But as you can see I got just off the top of my head, not counting this, you got 30 for the Claris Cliff, 40. 40 with a Berserk, 50, 60, 70, 80 with a Hamel, 90 with a Pop Mario, maybe 100, 20 for the Royal Winter, and 120, 130 for the Jug. Let's say 135 conservatively for the other pieces of porcelain. Um, see that at 100. So we're at 235. So all our gold then, once I've sold these pieces, owes me. 90 quid, 85 quid for 14 pieces of gold and two pieces of beautiful silver. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. What a hoard. Now, I'm going to do photographs of all these pieces and they'll be spliced in again at the end for you. Um, so, you've already seen the jewellery section. This now will do the porcelain section. I could have split it into two films, but you know what? I thought, let's have a really good and show you some really beautiful pieces. It came in as one job lot, so let's film it as one job lot for you. And to be honest with you, I'm having that much stuff in, I'm struggling to keep up. So I thought I'd film it, get it up for sale. Happy days. So we're going to do some photos now, and then I'm going to get to the research part, guys. See you soon.
Okay, so um, done doing some research on the Meissen mark, and I come across this website here that um, helps you with the uh, the Meissen marks and the dating. Uh, you know, talks about the curve, uh, how stiff they are, and so forth. Talks about the pattern, the you know, the repeated repetitiveness of the marks. Now, this here is the mark I got on mine, or very similar, which is the almost rushed the lines that they in very similar to the mark I got and they've got it down as hurriedly painted mark circa 1920 and note the presence of impressed and incised numerals which are nearly always encountered with the cross swords on genuine mycin. Now they've by here have got the impressed 19. Now mine has gone impressed 10 and the cross swords are the same. So I'm pretty confident it's 1920s because they, they cover all the dates. This one's nine, uh, 1850 to 1924 and so on. They tell you the size of the swords, everything. So I'm pretty confident mine's 1920. Then we come across to a website called replacements.com. You can see it just up here, replacements.com. And they are selling the exact pattern, molded pattern. They also have got a gilded border and slightly different flowers, but the actual pattern this basket weave pattern. Oh, really? Sorry guys, I had people come in there. So anyway, as I was saying, this molded molding is exactly the same as the molding on the um, piece I have. Now it was suggested that it was a piece of Dresden, but I've, I've got quite a lot of Dresden and I've compared the colors of the bowl that I believe is Meissen and the Dresden and the Meissen piece is so much whiter, uh, such a brighter white. So then we come across looking at values and do you think I can find one not a hope in L? Closest thing I could find was this little soup bowl and this was a small bowl with similar flowers and they had 50 quid or 45 pound for that. Um, but I'm going to be asking 100, 120 pound for that large bowl. Um, but I can't find a comparative. But either way, I'm not going to be letting it go for less than 100. It's, it's a hundred year old, it's mycin, it's beautiful, it's perfect, it's hand painted porcelain. So that's where I'm at. Moving on then to the Claris Cliff Harvest or Celtic Harvest. Now I have found them on eBay sold for as much as 80 with an offer, so I don't know what they took. Down 29.99, £30. These are all sold prices and then these are coming down here. They haven't even got the original lids. They've just got a metal lid. These got the original lids. So it's somewhere between the £30 and the £80. Well, I'm going to go in at 40 and keep it pretty fair. Then we look at the Magic City, uh, designed by uh, Susan William Ellis for Port Marion, pattern names Magic City. Now, this price has come right down. A full tea set, but it's £60. Another one, £50. £40. Just a coffee pot on his own, 34 um, and it keeps coming down and down and down and down. Then we come to the pot. There we go. As I said, they would have had a wooden lid. That's the one I've got. They sold it for £13 with the lid. If I get eight quid on a boot sale or so for it, or I may put it in the shop for about eight quid, seven or eight quid, um, and go from there. But that's where we're at. It's not, because it hasn't got the, the wooden lid, it's not worth a tenner. It'll be a little under. Um, looking at the Royal Winton uh, jug I got now, I couldn't find the piece I got, so I thought I'd just pull up some Royal Winton and show you some of the prices on the Luster Way. And then I stumbled onto this just coming up now in just a second. There, these are very unsaleable in my opinion. What I have is far better than this and a better Luster finish. And they are 26 for that. Well, I consider mine better, so I'm going to put 30 on mine. These are as, uh, sold prices, but then you go to the asking prices, right? And people are asking good money for Royal Wind and Luster. Whether they get it or not is another thing. They're not on eBay at the moment. All right, but we have a look here, and um, we're coming down, and there are some pieces on here that are relatively similar, as in, in the Luster. Bear with me. Uh, there's one with a luster flower on it. Mine hasn't got the flower. They had 60 on that. 
uh, mine is just a plain with a splashed colour. Right, they got a wall pocket there asking £34. Now my jug's better than the wall pocket. Cup and saucer, £30 for a cup and saucer. So there, there isn't one. Well, that's as close as you're going to get, I suppose, to mine. But mine's a better one than that because I got all the beautiful colours splashed all over it. And mine's a nicer shape, I think. And they want 30 quid. So. I'd say about 30 quid, 25, 30 pound for the Royal Winton Luster. Moving on to the USSR birds, Lom and Ozov. I can't even pronounce it. Lom on Ozov. Of. Lom and Ozov. Ah, USSR. <laughs> now they've got them sold for 7 quid and 8 pound, but then again, you come on. Oh, I was going to say, if you came on, I obviously have deleted the page. Some people were asking 2 pound for them. So, there's not a lot of value in it, but I knew there wasn't anyway. Moving along to the Hamel. Now, I found him straight away. It's Chamber Singers, Hamel Goble. Now, they're asking £40 and they're asking £70 for the figure. Sold prices on it are... Oh, that's the wrong one. Right, sold prices on the one wherever it's gone. Hang on, bear with me. No. I've lost the page, have I? Must have lost the page. The sole prices on here were ranging around twenty quid, guys. They're not get they're not achieving these prices. They they were achieving twenty pounds. Moving on, the other one was the schoolboy. Again, asking twenties and they were achieving about eighteen, twenty quid. I don't know where their mother pay oh there we go. They have actually had thirty five by there for a schoolboy. But uh I've I've also seen them for the twenty quid. £27. So the schoolboy's a little better than the uh, chamber singers. Moving on to the Dartmouth and Devon Whitcomb Fair jug. They're asking a tenner for the jug that I've got. However, they're not selling the pieces. They really ain't. They've got a little bowl here. They sold for £6. And uh, there's the jug. £2.50, guys. £2.50p. How can you sell something for £2.50p? By the time you pay your fees, you're making a quid. You can't even buy a cup of tea with it. Right, the Silvac, though, was a shock, because I, I valued the Silvac at maybe two quid, and they're actually asking 12 and 5 Well, look at the comparison. Somebody there is asking £12 for the vase. Some of them are the exact same vase, £5. Yet you come over to the soles. Somebody have sold it in the orangey colour, for 3 99 and they've actually achieved, on the vase I got with the green and the blue, they've achieved £12, and someone else have achieved £6. There's no consistency with eBay. Someone else now, the same vase, has achieved £15. Or best offer, so not far off. It don't matter what you got on eBay, you can find someone selling it, and sold it for good money, and somebody selling it for nothing. It really is shocking. So, that's where we're at. That's the research part of the porcelains. As you can see, um, I'm quite happy with um, what's been achieved. The prices, I'm happy enough. Overall, I'm going to do really well. The Claris Cliff has turned out to be um, okay. Um, the Meissen Bowl is spectacular. Both Claris Cliff and Meissen are both going online. They're not going in the shop. I'll probably put 50 on the Claris Cliff online or best offer and see what offers I get. And the Meissen, I'm going to put 125 on it and see if somebody comes in with it somewhere around £100. The rest of the pieces will be divided up between the shop and the car boot sale. And of course then there is all the silver and gold. What can I say guys? It was a beautiful, beautiful day. Bought some amazing pieces. Um, I did give a fair price, £330, to be totally honest with you. Um, they went to one one of these shops, one of these big national shops um, up in Aberdeenway, and they were offering them £5 a gram on the gold. Shocking, I, I didn't even know people still paid so little. Um, but I've, had, I've paid them a fair price on the gold, but the porcelains now have come in free. So that's absolutely fine, because uh, at the end of the day, I've got to make a profit. So, 
I'm happy, they're happy, they've said that isn't even a fraction of what's to come from the house, they're clearing their mother-in-law's house, um, so it's going to be lots and lots of stock coming in off them. So, I'm really pleased. <laughs> all i got to do now is sell it all, get money back in the till and buy some more. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. I know it's a long, long video today. Lots of amazing, great gear in there. If the camera's still struggling with the focus, I'm sorry. I will sort it out. I really will. And if I can't sort it, I'm just going to buy another one again and sell this one back on. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you like the A-cut. Um, if you've enjoyed, I would appreciate a like and a share. If you're new to the channel, guys, please subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know you've subscribed. I'll give you a thumbs up. You'll find me on eBay. I have a page on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance. Make sure you add the word clearance at the end of Antiques Arena. I have a page on the group, Antiques Arena, on Facebook. You'll find me on e uh, no, my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Um, or you can come see me in the shop. It's Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Foxtrot, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Oh, I'm knackered, guys. I didn't get in until 1 o'clock this morning. I went and saw Deadpool 2 and... Oh, God. It was awesome. Loved it. So, happy days. I was a bit late watching Deadpool 2. Um, couldn't uh, couldn't get anybody to have the children for us to go. So, I saw the Avengers Infinity War. At one minute past midnight the day it was released, but I couldn't do that with Deadpool. I had to wait, and he's killed me, but I have seen it. And that night. Oh, but God, it was worth it. <laughs> Bye for now, guys.